The house was valued at 105000 in the year 1994. The value appreciated to 165000 by the year 2007. We're first asked what was the annual growth rate between 1994 and 2007. Then we're asked to enter the correct answer in Part A as a percentage. So we'll express the growth rate as a decimal in Part A, and then a percentage in Part B. And then for Part C, we assume that the house value continues to grow by the same percentage, what will the value equal in the year 2010? And we're asked to round the value to the nearest $1,000. This problem is an example of an application involving exponential growth. In our textbook, we're given the following equation for exponential growth. P sub n equals the quantity 1 plus r raised to the power of n times P sub 0. But we can also write this as p sub 0 times the quantity 1 plus r raised to the power of n, where p sub 0 is a starting amount, r is the growth rate as a decimal, n is time, and p sub n is the amount after n time periods. However, a lot of other sources may express an equivalent equation in this form here, f of t equals a times b raised to the power of t. It's important to recognize that these two equations are equivalent they're just using different variables, where a is the starting amount, which is the same as p sub zero, b, the base, is equal to one plus r, where r is the growth rate as a decimal, and t is time, which is the same as n in this equation here. Let's set up and solve this problem using this form of the equation for exponential growth. The first value is given for the year 1994, which is the starting year or base year, so if n equals zero, we need to recognize that this represents the year 1994. This also tells us that p sub zero is equal to $105,000, because this will be the starting amount or the starting value of the home. And then we know the value is 165,000 in the year 2007. So we need to figure out what n would be for the year 2007. To do that, we take the desired year of 2007, subtract the base year of 1994, and this difference is equal to 13, and now we know that P sub 13 is the value in 2007, which equals $165,000. This is all the information we need in order to set up an equation so that we can then solve for R. Let's go ahead and use this form of the equation here where we have p sub zero on the left rather than the right. So to write our equation, we'll let p sub n be equal to p sub 13. So our equation is going to be 165,000 equals p sub zero, the starting amount or starting value of 105,000 times the quantity one plus r, where r is the unknown. And now for the value of n, because we have 165,000 on the left, we know that n is equal to 13. So our goal here is to solve this equation for r. So for the first step, let's isolate the quantity one plus r raised to the power of 13. So we'll divide both sides by 105,000. On the right side, this quotient is equal to one. Let's find this quotient on the calculator. So we have 165,000 divided by 105,000. Enter. Now we don't want to use a random decimal here. We want the exact value. So we'll convert this decimal to a fraction by pressing math, enter, enter. And so we have 11 sevenths. So now we have the equation 11 sevenths equals, we have the quantity one plus r raised to the power of 13. Now here to solve for r, we wanna undo this power of 13. To do this, we'll use the property of exponents where if we have a raised to the power of m raised to the power of n, we multiply the exponents. This is equal to a raised to the power of m times n. So to undo this exponent, we want the exponent to be one. So we need to think, what do we multiply 13 by to get a product of one? It would be the reciprocal of 13. 
So 13 as a fraction is 13 over 1. So 13 over 1 times the reciprocal of 1 over 13 would give us a product of 1, which means we're going to raise both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power of 13, which is 1 13th. So we'll raise the right side to the 1 13th power, and we'll also raise the right side to the 1 13th power. So now on the right side, when we multiply these exponents, we get a product of 1, and the quantity 1 plus r to the first is just 1 plus r. So we have 1 plus r equals, on the left side we have 11 sevenths raised to the power of 1 thirteenth. Let's continue on the next slide. To solve for r, we would subtract 1 on both sides of the equation. So we'd have r equals 11 sevenths raised to the power of 1 thirteenth minus 1. And now we'll go to the calculator and get a decimal approximation for the value of r. So in parentheses, we have the fraction 11 sevenths. We want to raise this to the power of 1 thirteenth. So here's the exponent key. And the exponent is 1 divided by 13. Press the right arrow to exit the exponent. And then we have minus 1. Enter. And we are told to round to four decimal places. So r is approximately 0 0.0354. So going back to our first slide, this is the answer to part A, 0 0.0354. Part B, we're asked to convert the decimal to a percentage. To convert a decimal to a percentage, we multiply it by 100, or move the decimal point to the right two places, and therefore R as a percentage is 3.54%. And now we're going to make a prediction about the value of the home to the nearest thousand dollars for the year 2010. So the general equation for p sub n is p sub n equals, again, the initial or starting value, which is 105,000, times the quantity 1 plus r raised to the power of n. So we have 1 plus 0 0.0354 raised to the power of n. Of course, we can find this sum here and write p sub n as p sub n equals 105,000 times 1.0354 raised to the power of n. Now we need to figure out what n would be for the year 2010. Well, n would be equal to the desired year of 2010 minus the base year. Remember, the base year was a starting year of 1994. So a minus 1994, and this difference is equal to 16 which means to approximate the value in 2010, we need to find p sub 16. So p sub 16 is equal to 105,000 times 1.0354 raised to the power of 16. Back to the calculator. So we have 105,000 times 1.0354 in parentheses, raise the power of 16. Enter. So rounding to the nearest cent, we'd have approximately $183,197.64. Normally we do round money to the nearest cent, but in this case, going back to the directions, they do say to the nearest $1,000. So here's the thousands place value. And because the digit in the hundreds place value is a one, we round down to $183,000. So our approximate value is $183,000 for the year 2010. I hope you found this helpful.